Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. I am really really excited to be sharing some Posca Pen fun stuff with you guys today. I've actually had the first set, um, the box of Posca Pens for a while now, well over a year maybe closer to two years, but I never really got to making a video about them. We'll talk about why soon. Now I have more Posca pens and I have three different tip sizes. I don't think I have all of the tip sizes and I definitely don't have all of the colors, but the three different tip types that I have are the medium tip, the fine tip, and I have two that use this brush tip. I've been playing around with Posca pens a bit lately and last month's sticker sheet actually for Patreon used Posca pens. You can't get that one anymore, but that was a lot of fun to make for my patrons. And I have a couple stickers that have been in my shop for a while that use these paint markers. But it's actually been a while since I've painted some sort of face or portrait with them painted drawn it's it's weird to know exactly what term to use with them because if you're not familiar posca pens are acrylic paint markers so there is paint inside of the marker and it's acrylic so of course it dries permanent it dries relatively matte as well and they are pretty fun to use it's a little bit tricky though and if you're familiar with these art materials at all, you'll know this already. They don't actually like paper very much. The nibs are pretty abrasive on paper and often just lead to especially watercolor paper pilling up, so a lot of artists who use gouache or watercolors who want to get into Posca pens can find them a bit frustrating because they don't work on the paper that we might be used to using, or they don't work as well. I'm using a Strathmore watercolor journal here, the 500 series, which is a paper that I'm actually not very fond of for watercolors. It's a bit waxy and the paint doesn't absorb very nicely into the paper, which actually makes it work a little bit better for something like Posca pens. Because of the waxiness of the paper, it helps it not to pill up as much. I've found that Posca pens actually work a little bit better if you use them on something like a panel or cardboard, or I don't know why my brain always thinks of like a rock. <laughs> you could paint on rocks with these. I've, I've seen kids do crafts painting on rocks with Posca pens. Anyway, they're more of a multi-surface crafting tool, which can lead a lot of artists to find it a bit frustrating working on paper. Not to say, of course, that you can't use them on paper. You just have to have a pretty light hand and be a bit delicate when layering colors on top of each other or working in the same area for longer periods of time. I definitely had some areas where my paper was pilling up and I believe this is the first time I've used Posca pens for a video and a big part of that is because I hold these like a pencil or a pen and and that means that it's kind of difficult to film because my hand is often in the way. That may be a silly excuse for not having featured them in a video at any point in the last three years that I've been making art related videos. I haven't had these that whole time. But knowing that they were going to be a little bit more difficult to film and I was going to have to adjust the camera angle seemed kind of silly in retrospect to go, oh, why don't I just move the camera and then I can film this, I, I don't know, anyway, it was enough to keep me from doing it up until now. My original plan was to paint these or draw these four different designs. My plan was to paint these four drawings and then turn them into a sticker pack, which I was really, really excited about. It's been a little while since I've launched a new sticker pack on my shop, but I've actually run into some issues with my Cricut cutting machine lately. For some strange and unknown reason, my Cricut no longer wants to cut glossy sticker paper. Matte sticker paper is fine, but the glossy paper, it doesn't recognize the cut lines, so it's not working. So anyway, long story short, I'm going to be outsourcing my stickers from now on, which is kind of a good thing. It was starting to take up a lot of time to make stickers, which I love doing. I love getting to have stickers on my shop. So these will be a sticker pack, but I have to outsource them, which means I have to have them made by a separate company. 
and have them shipped to me. I'm kind of actually really scared about that because when I make things myself, I can do my own quality control and I know that I'm happy with what I'm sending out. And by ordering them from a different company, I'm trusting that I won't get a batch of products that I don't like or that aren't satisfactory in quality to me. But I know that lots of people do it that way. And I'm really grateful that we're even able to get to this point where it's no longer really time efficient for me to make all of the stickers myself. So anyway, I'm excited. These will be stickers soon. I am just waiting for them to arrive and then they will be available on my shop. Pretty exciting. I find that Posca pens lead me to work in a much more illustrative way. So I tend to block in my colors more distinctly and go for almost more of like a cell shaded look in some instances. There are larger blocks of color as opposed to the more spontaneous chunks that I usually use like in a more painterly style with watercolors or gouache. So that's definitely something that I've been having to think about and change and adjust to. I know there are like with every art supply, there are a million different ways that you can use these pens to create different styles of artwork, but I definitely found myself leaning towards something more illustrative when using these particular tools. It's always interesting to see how the art that you make changes depending on the supplies that you use, and that's a really fun thing about these. Another challenge that I encountered when working with Posca pens is that I can't mix colors like I normally do when working with watercolors or gouache. So I'm not able to just take the two colors and mix them on a palette and then apply them. I'm limited to the colors that I have. And I know people get fancy with even art supplies like these for getting um, more customized colors. I definitely wasn't interested in investing in every single color of Posca pen. I don't even know how many colors there are, but for the amount that I would actually use them, I feel like I'm really happy with the colors I have. And and it's a nice challenge to try to put together something that works with colors that I can't manipulate. You know, I work with limited palettes a lot, but it would be totally different if I couldn't mix those colors in a limited palette with watercolors, if I was limited to just those colors in their pure forms. And that's kind of what we have here with the Posca pens. If I have a yellow, I can't mix it with a blue to make a custom green. I'm, I have to use those colors as they are. And I know that while the paint is still wet on the paper, I, I could make an effort to blend them together in a way. But it, I think it's fun to kind of treat it as a when in Rome type of situation. So when I'm using Posca pens, I can let the art supply manipulate how I create art. And I think that's a really fun thing to experiment with and to observe and see how the things that I make are different depending on what I'm using. And using these is even different from using like an alcohol marker because alcohol markers are a bit more transparent. So I'm able to layer colors on top of one another and have a lot more variation in that way. But with these, it's much more opaque and it just changes the whole process for me. It's still a lot of fun. It's just definitely very different and um, it's a unique creation experience. I had to remind myself to keep these little sketches relatively small because some of these nibs are pretty small and I don't have every color in every size. So if I wanted to color in a larger area with a particular color but I only had the smaller nib then I had to accept that it was going to take quite a bit of time to fill in all of that space which is something that felt really tedious for me. I like to take a big paintbrush and just drop paint all over the place so being limited in that way was something I was actually pretty impatient with. I was like, oh my goodness, I just want to fill in this whole area, but I couldn't treat it like paint. I had to treat it like a marker. That was definitely something I had to learn with and develop some patience for. And it was a really fun experiment and a really fun experience overall. It seems that a lot of people are drawn to Posca pens in the same way that we are kind of drawn to gouache. It has this bold matte illustrative quality to it where the colors are just so 
vibrant and um, enjoyable to look at, especially when people put colors together in these masterful, amazing, beautiful ways. That's definitely something I'm not an expert at, but I love to see the art that people make with Posca pens. It's just so clever, and I think that limiting ourselves in that way is a great opportunity to get to see other people's creativity. So we get to see how they take a limited number of colors or marker sizes and they turn it into something beautiful and unique and something that works and they can build a structure. Anyway, it's something that I really love seeing and something that I'm practicing, definitely not an expert at yet when it comes to using these particular tools, but it's so fascinating and I had a lot of fun playing with these for that reason. It's just a good way to challenge yourself, you know, mixing things up with different mediums and seeing how you create art when you're using something unique or something different from what you usually use kind of shows you what skills you rely upon and what fundamental tools and bits of knowledge you take with you no matter what you're using. So using these Posca pens really inspired me to want to get out my acrylic paints again and get out my oil paints again and, and try other mediums that I haven't used in a while and just see how my process has changed. You know, I haven't done an oil painting in, oh my goodness, a long time and I would really like to see how the process has changed for me and how I've learned on the medium I'm most comfortable with, specifically watercolor, and how that confidence and knowledge translates to other mediums. And I think there's a lot of really interesting opportunity to stuff like that. I knew that I wanted to theme this sticker pack and I was really inspired by various citrus fruits, so I wanted to kind of assign a different fruit to each portrait and then just take a fruit and a portrait and combine them in a way that I felt would be unique to me, if that makes sense. So every little design is themed off of a different fruit and I also wanted to work with a different base color for the skin and I wanted them all to be abnormal. So there's a very yellow one and a red face and purple and blue. And I'm really happy with how they all turned out. It's really interesting because even though these are paint markers and they're acrylic paints, so for the most part they're pretty opaque, but there's still some colors that are slightly more transparent than others. And it's just fascinating to see how the colors vary from one another. The more pastel colors often tended to be a bit more opaque as they appeared to have maybe a little bit more white in them. I'm not sure. I don't know about the specifics of how these are made or what they're made with, but I definitely found that they were a lot of fun to use. I got my Posca pens from jetpens.com, I believe, and I will leave as many links as I can find in the description of this video. I always love getting to share stuff with you guys where it's just me sitting down with a sketchbook and then talking about my experiences and working with a new art supply like this was definitely an interesting experience. I guess I shouldn't say a new art supply, but something that I don't use as often and that requires me to think about the creation process in a different way. One of the most challenging parts about working with Posca pens was when I wanted to have a finer line in an area where I did not have a finer tip. 
and this required me to oftentimes work backwards. So I would lay down a line that I knew was way too thick and, and way bigger than I wanted it to be with the intention of going back over it with a previous color to narrow out the line and to kind of carve out the specific shape that I wanted. And that was something that I did at least a little bit of in every one of these sketches. So if there was a really dark color, it was usually the dark ones where I didn't have a finer tip. So I had to make a line that was way too thick and then go back in with a lighter color to shape the line and make it into something that worked better with the overall portrait. Like I said before, it felt so tedious to me to um, have to work in this different way. It's kind of the same reason that I don't use like oil paints all the time because I don't like the idea of having to mix my colors before I start painting and to have to mix on a palette before I can start painting. And I know not everyone does it that way, and I know you can mix as you go with oil paints, but the mixing process with that particular medium always slows me down and makes me less likely to pick them up. And in the same way, knowing that I have to work differently with an art supply like these Posca pens makes me not always gravitate towards them. For me, the creation of art is a very therapeutic experience, and I like it when it is a little bit repetitive, you know, so I can kind of go through those motions and still have a unique painting experience and understand the routine and the structure and the order that I want to work in. So I have to be in a particular mood to explore a different medium and to try a process that I know isn't going to be quite the same. You'll notice that some of my markers are a little bit dirty, and that's because when I'm not using these, I don't really want them to go to waste or to dry out, so I often let my kids play with my Posca pens. They like to use them to decorate the fronts of their sketchbooks, and they absolutely love these markers, which means that they don't always stay as pristine and as clean as they could be, because they are small children, and I want them to be able to explore art related things and that means that sometimes things get messy but fortunately they're pretty easy to clean if you just give it a little bit of time and um, scrub the tip around a bit you can get them pretty clean as long as they don't dry out. Thank you guys so much for joining me in this video and of course a huge thank you to my members here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. I'm really excited to say that we now have original art and postcards available as rewards over on Patreon. I've been wanting to do that for a long time and um, I'm finally able to do that. Thank you so much to the people who have already signed up at those tiers. You can check out those various platforms if you're interested in some behind the scenes rewards and other types of goodies. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me in this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and I will talk to you all next time. Bye bye!